everyone, my name is Juan Landano. Welcome back to yet another video. Today's topic is tripods, everything tripods. What are they? When do we use them? And why the heck do they have three legs? So if we're gonna do this right, let's talk about what tripod means, okay? So the word tripod comes from an old Greek uh, root, right? Uh, tripodos, and so it's two words here, tri or tri and podos, which means legs. So basically, that's what we're talking about here. Three legs, right? Now, why three legs? Well, I think we've all been at some point in our lives sitting at a table, which normally has four legs, and you sit down and you notice that wobble, right? The table's wobbling. And, and you're like, oh man, typically somebody will, you know, bend over, put like a, a piece of cardboard or like, a, you know, you take a napkin and you fold it up really tiny and really thick and you put it under that, that leg that's shorter, right? Now, why don't I say the leg that's longer? Why isn't a longer leg a problem? Well, sometimes it is a problem in a four-legged table. But you see what happens if, if you have four legs and one of them is longer, it seesaws the table. It means the other two adjacent to it end up being shorter. And so one of them is gonna get, get that cardboard or that napkin, right? So whether the leg is short or long, it doesn't matter. The point is four legs, five legs, six legs. If one of those legs is off a little and you lean on the table, it's gonna cause that wobble. Three legs don't give you that problem. A three-legged table, or sorry, a three-legged stand, right? A tripod is going to be steady no matter what. If you take uh, either one of these legs, right? And you make it a little longer, let's do that. Let's take, let's take this leg over here, right? I just made it longer. Um, there's no wobble. Now this thing is totally unstable here, but there's no wobble. Let me make it a little shorter. So there you go, right? There's no wobble. It's still three legs and it's very stable at what it does, right? So tripods are great for keeping things without any wobble. Now let's get into some details here. So we have a couple of topics to discuss. One of them is going to be the types of tripods. So let's start with this tripod here. This is a very basic tripod. It's a full-size tripod and it's neither very heavy nor very light, but it tends to be on the heavier side. This isn't a, it seems like a stainless steel or aluminum, I don't remember. I got this tripod about 20 years ago. Um, it's, it's served me really well. Uh, most of the, the screws, everything is stainless steel. So this thing has spent quite a amount of time on the beach and there's no sign of wear or rust. Uh, but I do keep it pretty clean. I lubricate the screws and the joints with a little oil when I'm done. You'll notice that this tripod is kind of on the bigger side. Um, so this is definitely a full-size tripod for photographers, okay? The next type of tripod is a slightly more portable tripod. Now this is much, much lighter than what I just had in my hand. Um, even though this is aluminum, the other one was probably stainless steel. This is aluminum, you can also get carbon fiber. Carbon fiber um, is even lighter than this and it's a lot more expensive, okay? So this is a much fancier tripod and what I mean by that is it does a lot more things. And we're gonna start looking at, at some of these in a second, but right now we're just discussing the types, right? So this is a little more portable. Um, when you look at this tripod, it bends out of the way. Um, and because it's lighter, let me just showing you some of this right now real quick. Um, you know, and then of course this bar, I should have taken care of this first. You know, this'll come up here. And this ends up being a tiny little thing. It's really not that bad and it's very light, right? So you can attach it to your backpack and you can go wherever you want, right? So this is a little more portable. Now an extreme case of a portable tripod is this little thing. This is so portable, I can put this in my pocket, right? And definitely there are pros and cons. If you have a, a you know, like a, a DSLR with a big lens, this is probably not a good tripod for you. I wouldn't trust my camera to this. Uh, but if you're talking about something like you know, a small point and shoot or a DSLR with, you know, uh, not a very big lens. This is fantastic. This has a telescoping antenna. Um, it's telescoping antenna. It has telescoping legs and they work like an antenna. Remember the antennas in the old days in the cars, right? So that's basically how it works. And you can, you can adjust it fully um, and you wanna wait till it clicks so it can hold some weight, otherwise it's gonna be in the middle. But let me just show you, right? This is a really, and, and by the way, it goes really long. Um, this is not bad at all. Um, so this is extremely portable. 
like I said, if you know, this is great for if you're walking in the city, for example, and you don't think you're going to use a tripod, uh, even in the mountains, right? You don't think you're going to use a tripod that day. You're shooting mostly daylight and you're not going to uh, leave the shutter open for a while. You're not going to do anything fancy, uh, just pictures. Well, carry it in your bag. It's nice to have just in case, right? So this is extremely portable. Now, let me just tell you, all of the stuff I'm reviewing today, I'm going to have links to. Now, that previous tripod, the Manfrotto, um, not the, Man, the previous one, this one, the slightly bigger one, um, I'm not sure I can get that anymore because it's been around you know, for a while. I'll get the closest thing to it just in case you like it, and we'll break these down a little further. Um, I'm putting the links down in the description. I will warn you that I am a, an Amazon affiliate, so what that means is that I get a little kickback if you go into that link and you buy the product. On the other hand, you pay not one penny more for whatever you buy. Whether you buy it from Amazon on your side or whether you go through my link, you pay not one penny more. You pay the exact same price, okay? So it helps me because whatever little kickback I get, I use it to buy more stuff like this that I can review, right? So I just wanted to make that note. I wanted to be upfront uh, and honest with you. Uh, you don't have to buy it through my link, right? The important thing is you buy something you like and that you're happy, okay? Let's move on. There's another category of tripods and technically speaking, this is a tripod because it has three legs, but they don't extend, right? Um, these little things can, call, can be called handles or grips as well, because most of these you can close down, you put your camera on it, and you extend it, and you can use it for vlogging, right? When you're walking around, uh, selfies, any kind, any kind of stuff like this, right? But, you know, they have three legs, they're very stable. Uh, and these are also tripods, right? This is a little Manfrotto. I'll give you a link down below. This is one of my favorites. I use this, uh, well, I put this on the table and I put my, my mic on it. Uh, you can put a monitor on it if you're doing vlogging and you're like, I use my DSLR and it doesn't have a flip out screen. So I put a monitor on here and a mic. Uh, really practical little thing, doesn't cost much. I think it's under 20 bucks. So, and it's Manfrotto. These, are, these things are made in Italy. I mean, they're fantastic. So uh, this is a, a vlogging tripod, if you will. And I'll show you another one real quick. So this is called a switch pod. Now this is one of the coolest gadgets that's been around in a while. Um, I love gadgets for photography. And, you know, there's always something new coming out, but very rarely does something spark a, you know, a real interest and make you raise your brow. This thing is fantastic. Now, the reason I got this, I mean, everything has a, a particular use, right? The reason I got this is because it's very thin. And, you know, when I travel with a small bag, this fits in the laptop compartment and barely takes up any space. This is magnificent. It doesn't weigh anything, but it's solid aluminum, right? Um, the way it works is it's got magnets that keep it that keep it closed. Now the cool thing about vlogging with this is that instead of the camera being where the hand is straight up, it keeps the camera a little further away because of this angle. So your camera is further away from your face and you get a wider view behind you, right? Um, fantastic if you don't have a very wide lens on your camera. So this is a cool gadget. Now if you feel like using it as a, as a stand, it opens up and you can stand it up. And if you put a head on it, like uh, they sell for basically any tripod, then you can put your camera on it, you can adjust it up and down, right? And when you're done, the cool thing is you flip it back and it's back to this mode, right? And with a flip of a finger, it's not even a flip of a finger, it just opens right up again, right? So magnificent little gadget. I'm gonna put the link down below. This is called a switch pod, right? Um, light, solid, and it's extremely, extremely practical. That switch pod tripod reminds me of, uh, of those cool blades that people used to play with in the 80s. I don't know if you ever saw them. I think they used to call them butterfly knives. They were really cool. Now, I don't have any experience with them, but I've heard people talk about them. Um, apparently, they were just really cool gadgets, and I did see like them in movies, used in movies. But anyway, let's move on. Now, when people are buying tripods, one of the other types of tripods that they look at is and this is a category that actually is, is very popular. It's expensive versus cheap, right? Now, where do you land in this, right? If you're new to photography, I wouldn't go very expensive. First of all, you don't even know if you're gonna like photography long enough to keep that thing around, right? And you're never gonna get your money back for it. You're gonna end up selling it for half price or less. Um, so, so you wanna stay on the cheaper end, but you don't wanna go too cheap 
because then you're going to have a bad experience, right? Your camera's not going to be stable enough. You're going to get wobbly pictures, maybe blurry pictures. So you got to watch those limits, right? Never go, you know, you don't have to go the most expensive, but you, you don't want to go the cheapest route, right? Uh, if you're already experienced uh, with photography, if you're an amateur or a pro, then of course you want to step it up a notch, right? Uh, you want to go towards the most expensive end. With my photography equipment, I tend to buy the most expensive gear I can afford without, you know, of course, selling my house or, you know, my car or whatever, or my children. Um, so you want to, you want to do something like that, right? But some people that I know, they'll just always buy the cheapest thing they can buy. And you know what? That's okay if you know what you're getting into, but you end up with a bag full of just a lot of cheap crap that's always falling apart and that you can't rely on. And if you're going to start doing gigs for money, Nah, you don't want to be in that situation, okay? You want good equipment. One quick category is weight, right? You saw the weights of these tripods, right? This is relatively heavy, you know? Uh, it's got its purpose, and we're going to leave it here because we're going to talk about it next, right? But this is relatively heavy, and then there are just really, really, really light tripods. And some people, uh, you know, $800 tripod made out of carbon fiber, uh, the first thing that crosses their mind is it's got to be good, right? For 800 bucks, you, you, this thing has got to be, and, and it is, it typically is. But there are pros and cons to everything. And if your tripod is too light, it's going to be great for hiking. It's going to be great for when there's not a lot of wind. But if there's a lot of wind, that's another story, right? The, the tripod is going to be top heavy because your equipment's up here. And then all this is extremely light and it's going to wobble when a strong gust of wind comes, right? So you want a strong, sturdy tripod if you're going somewhere where there's a lot of wind, right? So if it comes to weight, light and heavy, keep in mind, uh, where are you shooting, right? I like to keep both. I like to keep a really light one and I like to keep a really sturdy, this is my sturdy one, right? Slightly heavy. Um, it doesn't wobble on me with the wind. It doesn't, I mean, you know, there are gusts of wind that'll wobble anything, right? There are hurricanes and tornadoes, but we're not talking about that. Uh, your average beach day or up on the mountain, right? You get these gusts of winds. So you want a nice strong tripod, right? And if it's a good solid tripod, you can kind of put your, your arm on it. And um, if it's, you know, just a half a second shot or whatever, and you can just keep it a little more stable, right? If it's a really long exposure, probably not a good idea. So here we are at the end of our first video. This was going to be a much longer video, but I decided to cut it into three parts. So this has become the kind of odd ending to the first video. This is why you see me here in the garage. If you found this content useful and you're looking forward for the next content coming out, please give me a like, uh, subscribe to the video, and don't forget the notification bell, the little bell, because that will alert you when the next videos come out, okay? Because there's gonna be a part two and a part three. Um, I will see you in the next video. Please take care of yourselves, drink your water, take your vitamins, and ciao for now.